You cannot talk about the fashion industry and leave out the modeling world. With agencies like Cavalli, Crystal Models, and now Jero Model Management, Uganda has become a hub for models that are actually making it on the international scene. Welcome to the show. My name is Roma. Of NTV Style Project, we talk to the man behind the international faces that have graced all the big, big runways and uh, commercials for big brands, Balenciaga, Gucci, uh, Miu Miu, mention all those big brands. We want to understand the business of fashion and um, how it has evolved over time. Welcome to the show, Jara. Thank you very much for having me, Rama. It feels mm. really amazing to have you, you know, here at our space and to have conversations with at you. At the to agency. Sit down with you. Yes, at the agency. <laughs> <laughs> headquarters. Headquarters, JMM. <laughs> You've been nine years into the business. Yes, next it's year we celebrate 10 years. 10 years. I, I don't know how we we'll celebrate. And, uh, it's going to be a huge celebration. Uh, talking about uh, the modeling industry and uh, you as a person, Jara Muzira Job. Mm. Who are you? Mm. Okay, so John is a fashion en entrepreneur. Yes, I'm so much into this whole industry of fashion, modeling, and the entire business of, you know, literally fashion. So I am an entrepreneur, I am a show producer, pageant coach, and the creative director for German, one of the leading agencies that we do have right now in Africa, literally. We're competing with the global fashion markets at the moment, so we love to Kind of repeat that for <laughs> our viewers. <laughs> I will say that again, we're competing uh -huh. with global fashion markets in New York, Paris, London, and Milan. And um, I'm also one person that has created a revolution in this business here in Uganda, whereby modeling is now respected more. It's, it's a career, it's a business. And yeah, I love to see young people thrive and uh, uh, ab ab Absolutely. Um, in your own opinion, how has um, uh, modeling uh, journey been in, in our country, Uganda? Uh, it has grown. I'm not going to lie, Rama, because I remember way back during um, the days of Sylvia Woy, our godmothers of fashion. I Forever love 21. Them, you know? Exactly. Those um, uh, monthly way shows. Way back, like really, really way back. So mm. right from the 90s to the 2000s and then now. The only difference that we do have right now is mm -hmm. that um, there's more quality onto the global fashion markets. Back then, it was more or less based here back at home whereby you know shows were happening i mean there were models before there were designers but right now people are embracing themselves more uh, can, can we say that is uh, influenced by uh, maybe the power of uh, social media yeah, the power of yes, more I mean, networking back then there was no mm. social media uh, absolutely and um, if i remember very well uh, is it a meter that you placed first on the international a market meter stays in a Gumwana competition she won africa's next top model Part of her win was her, you know, getting representation in New York, Paris, DNA, London, and London. Yes. DNA, then mm. Viva London, and then, you know, all these other agencies. So, mm. literally, Africa's Next Top Model placed a new tour. I've seen uh, lots of um, other youngsters that are coming up. I've mm. seen you uh, groom young girls, um, 15 years, 16 years, mm -hmm. and they actually make it after like two years, three years. Mm. And it's, it's a beautiful journey. It's very, very beautiful to watch. Mm. What would uh, someone consider modeling as a career? Someone should consider modeling as a career because it works the same way like how we go to school to be doctors, lawyers, pilots, name it all, architects, and then all that. Only that with modeling, it's literally one of those um, industries whereby your talent puts food on the table. Only yeah. that mm. in Uganda, mm. it's still really small. I'm not going to lie. It's growing, but it's not on the scale of New York, Paris, London, and Milan. Yeah, that, that brings me to the question, um, how, how easy or how hard is it for you to um, maybe convince parents of these um, youngsters mm. that modeling is actually a career mm. that needs to be respected? Okay, perfect. So mm. usually what we do is that we do have master classes here at the agency. So we also have parental master classes, mm -hmm. whereby we get these parents for these young girls and young boys, mm. sit them down and just take them through the journey. Mm. And the other thing that we usually do is that we make sure the parents are fully involved in the career. We don't just sign someone and then we say, okay, we're going to send them to New York, Paris, London, Milan in the next two years, mm -hmm. and the parents don't know anything. We make sure the parents are part of, you know, the time we discover them, mm. they know the development classes that they have here, because most of our, you know, most of the models that we represent are in school. No wonder I've seen process. pictures yes. of um, the girls traveling at the airport <laughs> and their parents <laughs> are around as well. Exactly. It's, it's <laughs> it is heartwarming that to, is to, the to include the parents that in the journey. The and the other thing that has helped us a lot is, you know, the lineup of all these girls that do have they succeeded they've done very there well there is evidence they have powerful stories so mm. right now parents believe that this is a business yeah 
But yeah. we make sure they are fully involved in everything. I, I, I totally get. Mm -hmm. uh, over time, you've had um, different model searches, mm -hmm. and uh, people out there don't know what exactly you look out for. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you look for in um, a model? Mm -hmm. So there's physical attributes that every fashion model should have. Minimum five feet to nine inches tall, like five feet. That is an international tall. standard. Minimum international, yes. Mm. Sometimes they'll take people that are five feet, eight inches tall. But right now what we're looking for is five feet, nine inches tall, nothing less than that. Then the rest we do train because there's some attributes that naturally you either have them or mm. you don't. But then the others, you know, you learn along the way, confidence, personality, self-esteem, all these things, taking pictures, walking, those ones you learn along the way. But naturally there's some of those attributes like, you know, your looks, um, your, your, your special features and then all that. So that's what we look for. Mm -hmm. What is the presence of crossing from maybe um, an African agency to um, New York? Back then, um, during the time of Patricia Akello 2014, most models had to, you know, develop very well in Cape Town. Cape Town mm -hmm. used to be the first market. Cape Town and then Jobas in South Africa. Mm -hmm. But now things have changed, whereby mm -hmm. you will scout someone, develop them very well, and then before you know it, Prada wants an exclusive with them. Fendi, Versace, you know, Gucci, all these big brands. So, so you've actually had direct contact with... Uh, That's it. All right, uh, talking about uh, modeling agencies, mm -hmm. uh, we we have so many in Uganda. We have Crystal Models, we have um, Cavelli, we have lo lots of them. There's so many. Why is yeah. it that you... Um, in a Ferrari and then a Toyota, um, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. It is. <laughs> I'll actually <laughs> take that as a compliment because it's you. Mm. So I would say it all comes back to what do you want? You as the brains behind it. You with your team, what do you want? So what we did is that, um, you know, there's so many agencies, I'm not going to lie, but mm -hmm. then all these agencies are doing different things all together. But then for us, we told ourselves that we want to be very different, absolutely different, to the fact that it's not about the money, but, you know, to make sure we foray ourselves so much into passion, commitment, developing lives, changing lives. So the whole notion of JNM starts with, you know, um, to see young people thrive in life. So to us, it's leaving a legacy, and uh, above all is... You know, identifying our X factor, our X factor being the international market. For us to know that people that the world here doesn't look at so, so much are the people that internationally are celebrating. Well, uh, I feel like I'm interviewing uh, Anna Winter. <laughs> I feel like I'm interviewing uh, Versace, and it's, it's a very good experience. <laughs> it's a very, very good experience. I know this yeah. interview will reach them. Thank I'm very, very sure. Mm -hmm. Mani, as we are growing up, we have very many... Uh, so things that we want to do, yeah. we have so many dreams. Mm -hmm. What is your advice for um, someone like that out there? So to someone out there that is watching and you want to pursue this career, rule number one, believe in yourself more than anything else in this world. Because people are going to crush you to the fullest. And to be realistic, there's standards in this um, fashion industry, in the whole modeling industry, of whereby they'll say the girl has to be 5'9", the boy 6'1". Sometimes that doesn't work. It comes back to you. What do you want to achieve as a human being? So believe in yourself. Make sure your passion supersedes literally everything. Believe in yourself. Uh, be professional. Have, uh, you know, have a vision board of what you want to achieve in life as a human being. Because at the end of the day, you don't just wake up and say, I want to be like Rama, hostile project. There is a process. You have to trust the process. So the minute you identify that I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, and then all that, There's take so much your time address, yeah. to you know, study the industry, study the world. So I would say, you know, passion superseding everything and believing in yourself. The rest you can always learn. And always remember no dream is invalid. Uh, absolutely. In Italy, there is a fashion council. Mm. Um, of course, Anna Winter is part of the thing. And um, these are people that come up together mm. and they support creatives in the industry. Mm. Why don't we have something like that in Uganda? And what is stopping us? Um, I would say we do have councils in Uganda. We absolutely do have councils. Uh, are, they, the are they working council, councils? Yeah. The one that is spearheaded by Gloria Wavamuno, and then there's... Um, there's another council that is... Also Fashion here. Society of Uganda, Society I heard about Uganda. it, yeah. There's another one for Santa Anzo as well. But then I'm thinking the only way this is going to work, councils in Uganda have to just sit down and create just one body. I really apprehend the ones that are trying to you know, push this movement as well, all the different councils that we have, but it also comes back to let's all unite and do something great. Uh, absolutely. It is It is absurd that um, the president is now pushing import substitution mm -hmm. through Bubu by Uganda Build Uganda. Um, I'm really happy that you're wearing uh, Ugandan Fatuma, brands Kais and Kaisdivo collection. collection. Yes. And uh, 
Well, I'm not wearing Uganda, but <laughs> <And> <laughs> of course, sudden, su su yeah, certain things <laughs> have to come to play. Yes. Sometimes it is the quality, sometimes it is the price as well. Mm -hmm. So there is so much that we have to do. Bring me to the question. Mm. If we had um, a unifying, maybe a union mm. of the Fashion Council, mm. I picture us at being at the forefront of projects like Bubu, mm. because now, the president in, um, I think, the la last year in his addresses was always talking about clothing as a basic need. Mm. And we are not waking up. Mm. He's giving us signals, but we are not waking up. Mm. The biggest thing that I would say is let's unify ourselves a lot. Because at the end of the day, it's teamwork. It's us coming back to sit down on the table again and notify that, you know, Yes, Joram could be working with models in New York, Paris, London, mm -hmm. and Milan, but then Joram is here back at home. So let's get all these big dogs, put them together, and then just breathe as one person. It's the only way we'll all go to the government and say, this is what we believe in, and then, you know, the big people will listen to if us. If you have an upcoming show, is it? No, an ongoing show yeah. called The Star Maker. Mm -hmm. So literally, we started The Star Maker to highlight different creatives, models, um, people in the fashion industry that have ex and uh, what they've gone through, their stories. But then we started with our very own, with our very, very own models that we discovered, that we nurtured and have made it, that are working in New York, Paris, London, and Milan. So we sit down with these young girls and then boys, and they tell us exactly what it means to make it to the top. No more questions for you, <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we speak to a model that has gone through the hands of the man himself, Jerome Mozira Job. And uh, she recently debuted for Valentino. She just flew back in. That's what you uh, <laughs> told yeah. us. She like the minute I got that call from CC, the producer, and then you, I was uh -huh. like, let's put this girl on the next plane to come and you know, shoot. For exactly. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Tonight, we are catching up with Jibril Adia Igale, a Ugandan beauty model, extraordinary model that recently debuted for Valentino. Welcome to the show, Igali. Thank you. Uh, you've, you've been in the industry for a very, very short time, but you're already making news. We're already talking about you, and here you are being hosted on uh, Uganda's Unparalleled TV show. Well, I'm How has the journey been like? I'm grateful for being part of this show, because this is like a dream come true. And my journey has not been quite as the same journey as some other models. Absolutely. Because most it's models have, have, been this, have been scouted, and, si and they got signed. They got signed, me, developed yes. uh, before they can even travel mm -hmm. um, to international but for destinations. Me, as, as discovered through an online competition, which was the opportunities are here in Uganda. That is last year? Yes, 2020. 2020. Mm. Yes, it was an online competition for the models, designers, and different, arts. different creatives. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I won the model category, and part of my prize was getting signed to JMM. And I didn't know much about that fashion industry, I didn't know how to handle myself, but we went through master classes where we were taught everything. And I think that's how you get to see the models out there on set, because mm -hmm. we are also trained. We go through different sessions, we, we have classes. The behind the scenes yes. before we see someone actually making it on an international runway, exactly. what really goes on behind? Uh, the master classes, the what? Yes, there is master classes. Of course, through these master classes, you're taught how to have hard skin, to everything the industry is yeah. not that easy it's not easy it's not easy at all a okay, and, and before we, we, we before we dive deeper into um that mm -hmm. why why modeling why did you choose modeling as a career this is my passion it's my dream it's my dream i've always dreamt of being a fashion model and at first it was at the level of a ugandan fashion model mm -hmm. but again there is the way god makes his things i'm an international model now yes 
how does it feel? It feels so good. And before you debut on that international runway, what other shows had you done locally in Uganda? Um, Which other designers had you worked for here back I home? Had wa I had worked for Anita Beril, the ASKP. I also worked for the Menstrual Ship Bank Fashion Shop. And I also did my first magazine cover photo, which was Malvi. Yes. Uh, we want to know what are some of those challenges that uh, models are facing internationally, more so uh, black models. I wouldn't call them challenges. If you've really had enough of the master classes and you've really learned something, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call them challenges. But since we are all humans, they can be challenges but life changing lessons, you know? So one of the challenges we get is. Um, rejection because of your appearance so that's like racist or racism exactly. yeah? Yeah, yeah so i think that's one of the things that models get not only even black models all models around the world on personal experience mm -hmm. what is that one thing that you saw that was different um the expectations of what uh, you had in your mind uh, of the international market and what you found there how different is it well, when you, when you go to Europe, of course, you expect to be loved, you expect to be taken in by everyone, but that's not it. You're not your queen. Yeah, so. and you always have to absorb the fact that even if you're rejected today, mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't you, then even if they had allowed you. You know the thing about the, the industry in Europe is that they can allow you for casting, mm -hmm. you fit in the outfit, and you don't walk You don't the appear show. on the... You don't. Talking about Valentino, how yes. was the casting process, and um, how did it make you feel? Maybe uh, when your agent told you that you were actually chosen to work for Valentino. Um, first of all, on the day that there was a casting for Valentino, mm -hmm. I already had a casting in the morning. And you know, I'm not good with the locations that side. So of course I you're, you're new to the environment, yeah. Imagine <laughs> on the day you have two castings, you wow. get lost. Then you reach at a different location. I first went to Christian Dior and they were like, sorry, madam, you're lost. <laughs> You know I have a problem, I think it's with most models that have big feet, like the shoes of the designers, because at Valentino we had to walk in their outfits, That's in their the dresses shoe. and mm. their shoes wow. for just a casting. Wow. So when I went in, the dress was nice, it fit me properly, okay it was fitting, but, the but then the shoe, <laughs> <laughs> my leg couldn't fit in, I was like this is the first sign that I'm not going to walk. Uh -huh. But again I had a strong heart, I was like let me just try and ask them if I can walk in my shoes. They, luckily enough, they allowed me. Then, luckily enough, I was chosen and I was given a uh, robe to go and try on some wow. clothes, which wasn't with some other models, because most models were coming and they would tell them, okay, we shall, we we shall call let you. you know. Mm. Yeah, like that. But again, for me, I was just told to go and try on something. Amazing, amazing. I felt like flying. How heartwarming is that? My uh, smile was from ear uh, to ear. Young girl from Uganda, and um, you're having a yes on yeah. such a big brand. On, yeah, I was so excited to work for it in that. I would already sleep and dream me walking on the runway. Wow. Now, if I tell you <laughs> about the <laughs> runway. How was it? When we, when we arrived in Venice, I thought it was a joke. I was like, how can a city, how can, it's like the whole of Uganda mm -hmm. on water. You know, living in a dream. Exactly. The things we watch in movies were happening to me. You're a model. Like being one moment, in Paris I would even catch myself and be like, am I really living this? I can imagine. And it was true. <laughs> What is your um, word out there to people that want to be like you now? I want them to know that there is a thin line between being desperate and being ambitious. I learned that from my mentor. Oh, wow. You know? So if you're desperate for something, you'll crash. You'll fall in every hole that comes your way. You make lots of mistakes. You'll see them yeah. like opportunities, but in actual, in actual sense, they're just going to pull you back. You know? When you're so desperate, you're going to sign fake contracts. That's how you hear young girls saying that I signed a contract, but I haven't gone anywhere. You're signing contracts. I have no jobs. Don't even yeah. Know of, yeah. I want to add all parents out there. Please don't sit on your children's dreams because of the things you hear back. That's all background noise. We are models, but we are not doing all these bad things that you hear. You know? What, we get what our money the wisely the perception and we is are told. I think that's a conversation that needs to go on and on to on and uh, change on. perception of... Um, our parents because of maybe the generational gap and media as well. Yes. All right. Um, Igale Adia Jibril. Yeah? Yes. That is your on social media. Y no, on Instagram it's Jibril Igale. Uh -huh. Facebook it's I Jibril Hadia Igale. And then on TikTok it's Jibril 18. Guys, we've really had fun shooting this. I know it was a short conversation, but I'm sure you've learned a lot about the modeling industry and what happens behind 
all the glitz and glamour that you see on your screens back at home. We, it's been real and uh, we've been shooting on location. JMM, that is Jira Model Management Headquarters at Tirupati Mazima Mall. And don't forget to follow me at Ramakizito, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And with that, 